Mandi Tabatege Eli Tuba and the Bully Seku Chepesin Way Two, the Bully Seku Executive Year Two, Yasef Ramfondain, Methodist Society. Mandi Bully Se, we killed as Ngobanzi, Dinga Kanulanga, the Bully Senga Kumbi to our audiences. And our viewers on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, and on all the social media platforms. The Nibuli Sanongi Betuna, the Nibuli Sangengo Ketegileyo, our guest and host for the evening, um, Fundi C, the Reverend Juliet Van Fochel. Uh, um, Fundi C, Van Fochel is. Uh, stationed at the Buffalo City Central uh, Methodist Mission uh, 313, which was previously the East London Coastal Circuit 313. Uh, uh, the last time I recall, she was stationed at the Cambridge Society as the resident minister. Mfundisi Siagwamgela, welcome to Bramfundain Methodist um, Society Wesley Guild. And welcome, Kuninonge Bazalone Bamkulen Tanga and Yanam Sanje in Gonzo, a city, Tassibiza in Gonzo, Yom Tandazo, Nokuzila, Tassi Lungi Selela in Gonzo, in Gulu, Aobiko, this coming weekend on the 7th and the 8th of May, which is the Bramfondain Wesley Guild 8th Annual Revival. In Gonzo Yom Vuselelo, Bazalone Bam Nani Botate. Ingonzo Yogubuisel Wakwetu. Um, as you know that in the past two years we we have not been found um at the altar of the Lord and we saw fit Ogokba Singake Nati Sifan and Alam Tuli O Tindingangake Dikamange. And so today we have gathered here to remind ourselves who we are and to remind ourselves of our purpose as we prepare for this coming eighth annual revival this coming weekend. Mandenze gele nikele to our on trial member who will do the opening prayer for us and the Reverend Von Fochela will then um, proceed to hand over to you to lead us. I will now hand over to the on trial member of our Wesley Guild. Dibulisa umfundi si, dibulisa nani, my brothers and sisters, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Um, ben tella se valene amesho, tizo tandasa. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our presence. You are welcome in this place. Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 20, for we Two or three gather in my name. There, there, there am I with them. As we begin our time of worship, we, we release our cares and anything else that will hinder us from experiencing more of you in this service today. We know our hearts and minds. We focus our hearts and minds on you. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. Forgive us for having our minds set on other things and not giving you the honor you deserve. We gather together to lift up the name of your son, Jesus, the name that is above every name. All glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. sister um, I will now proceed to hand over to you, Mfundisi. Um, so that you can lead us in worship and praise and in the word of God. Over to you, Mfundis. Greetings to the circuit leadership, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, all protocol observed. One heart, one way, and one way, one heart. Allow me to thank the leadership of Bramfontein Methodist Society Wesley Guild 
for the invite to be part of this year's spiritual revival under the theme, The God of Restoration, where I believe we all are in need of a touch from God, whether in mind, in body, or in soul. And so I pray that tonight, the Creator God, the Redeemer, and our Sustainer will indeed come and envelope and embrace us just as we are and where we are, so that we meditate on scripture, so that we meditate on what we believe God wants us to hear and experience tonight. And therefore, so that we can go out in a world that is fractured and broken to show ourselves that we have indeed been found not only in a revival, but also in the presence of God. Let us therefore become quiet as we listen to scripture taken from the book of Luke chapter 6. And I'm reading only two verses, verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came out of him and healed all of them. May God bless his word unto all of us who hear and do likewise. me, a simple overview of the text tonight speak of a Jesus that came down and stood on a level place. And if I could simply put a theme to tonight's meditation or tonight's devotion, it will be the Christ that strike a balance of grace in which I believe I would have said the divine process of reverse osmosis. The text we just read can further be explored about the Beatitudes, the blessings and the vows that Luke speaks of, unlike Matthew that only speaks of the Beatitudes. What we have come to know at this point in time is that Jesus is in a journey with people because it says that he came down with them. And therefore, I would like for us to reintroduce ourselves to this text. Not so much the text being reintroduced to us, but we introduce ourselves to the text. It says that Jesus came down and he stood on a level place. The level place historically could be said that it refers to a place where the corpses of dead people were found. It can be said this level place that Jesus stood on, it's a place of disgrace, of idolatry, of suffering, of misery, of hunger, annihilation, and that of mourning. However, Jesus came down and he stood on this level place. He stood and he taught from that level place, almost like I am about to announce something that is better and greater than what these level places are representing. He's about to announce God's realm in a place full of misery, full of pain. And as we have heard just now, in a place where people were sick and in a place where people were supposedly tormented by evil spirits. He's about to, to announce the restoration or the renewal of this level place that he stands on. Because not so long ago, before this time, the prophets has, had foretold and foreseen that the glory of God will arise from level places that is tormenting people. And there God's glory will be revealed. We find that in the Old Testament, both in Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, these 
level places. And these places where God's glory had to be revealed were foretold about. However, in today's life, we need to understand how do we locate ourselves in or on these level places? How do we manifest God's glory in our own level places, our level places coming from a broken society, a broken family, a broken life, or a broken person that presents itself within the Wesley Guild, within the organizations that we have been forming part of. And therefore, how do we navigate ourselves from being conscious of where we are as a people, where we are as young people, especially? And what are the level of brokenness that we bring to the service, that we bring to the revival, that we bring to prayer night after night? What level of, of brokenness is it that this level place that we are on that, that require God to enter in? What is this level of brokenness that we might be talking about? And therefore, I... I would like to say that on this level place that Jesus stood and came down from, he was surrounded with sick people. He was surrounded with a broken society. He was surrounded with those who could not do anything for themselves, but they heard about Jesus. They heard that this is someone that can do something about their brokenness, that can do something about a life that is no more the same as it was before. The societies that came to him was fractured by oppression, was fractured by the oppression of those who were the oppressors above them. And whether these level places could be seen or felt by all people, those who came to Jesus at that moment needed him and needed a touch from him. So how does our level places look like today? Some of our level places, if I may ask, or, or if I may put it forth, are a place that never ends. It's a pain that endures year after year. It is a place that we can say is both physical and spiritual. We speak of a state of poverty that not only our physical um, humanness experiences, but also our spiritual lives are that that reside in a state of poverty. We speak of, of, of students that once they enter into the educational system, the hope is when I'm done with my studies, I will come out and I will have a better life only to find that once they come out of that system, the struggle continues because as they think they have met or, or they, they, they make the ends to meet, the ends are being moved. A continuous struggle for many that graduate year after year. We find ourselves in a, in a space post-COVID that those who have lost loved ones are unable to come to terms with the loss and the pain of a loved one that have moved on. And how do we then define these level places so that the glory of God can be manifested as it was in the days of Jesus? However, tonight I, I do not bring any hope that I am the good news. No, I am not. The good news tonight is that those that came to Jesus was not in need of only the healing from the body. Um, disfigurement or the body ailments, they were also in need of the spiritual renewal to be put back into place where they, where they should be in community. And therefore, amidst this level places of disgrace and this level places of, of hopelessness, Jesus appears to be amongst them. It is Jesus' presence that made the difference. Because the Bible says that out of him power went, and they were healed and cured of their diseases and evil spirits. But the beautiful thing here that I would love for us to remember is Jesus came down. Jesus came down to be amongst those who were 
dealing with issues that were beyond them. He came down to be amongst them. He stood on their level places. He stood on their disgrace. He stood on their, on, on their sicknesses, on, on the death that was rising up with them. He stood on those level places. And he announced that the realm of God is here. He was about to reverse whatever is happening to them, reverse it so that they can enjoy this life that he is about to announce to them. Because of the power that went out of him, they were able to understand that what they have experienced was not only that of the physical body, but also that that needed a spiritual touch. You and I might need to come to a place where we allow God's saving grace to journey with us again. You and I might also need to go back to our Sunday school and our confirmation classes to revisit the journey of journeying with Christ. And therefore, like I said in the beginning, the process of reverse osmosis is where water that was once salty become purified. But there is a membrane through which the salt water needs to penetrate to make it fresh again. And maybe some of our lives are not only in need of a touch from Christ, but a penetrative and a sustaining type of grace that keep us where we should be. We are on different level places at this moment. Different level places places of salt water. We know Jesus because we've been taught to know Jesus from confirmation from Sunday school into our lives as young guilders, into our lives as young people. We know Jesus. But maybe it is not so much about the justifying grace, but it's a bit more than that. What the Methodists are calling that which is called sanctification. I often say that it is easy to understand how Jesus worked, but how do you stay in the stable relationship post the experience that you had with Jesus or the encounter that you had with Jesus? Because we are told of a loving God, we are told of a brother that stick closer than a friend, However, when we hit the rock bottom, when things are not going as they should, can we still speak of this loving God? Can we still speak of a God that worked in places where I cannot see, where I cannot feel? Because somehow when we hit the rock bottom, it is as if we cannot feel and experience the same God when things are going well with us. However, tonight, I would like us to focus on the pressure that is needed for the salt water to turn into purified water. It is the pressure through the membrane that makes the salt water to be purified. And maybe the pressures of this life that keeps us like in a rocking boat. Maybe it is those pressures that need us to, to, to go to to Jesus and say, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am, Lord, just as I am. Take me, cleanse me, purify me, heal me, restore me. The membrane's purpose is for the water to penetrate through it in order for it to be fresh. And maybe that is what our lives need at this moment, a new touch. A new touch of this Jesus that stands on our level places, that stands on our disgrace, on, on, our, on, on our painful experiences. Where we need to realize once more that Jesus never left us, God never left us. That in that boat that we cannot feel him, he is still present with us. And maybe this divine process of reverse osmosis 
is so that our pain can be reversed into joy. Our misery and disappointments and our failures can once again be stripped off us so that we experience the joy of the Lord. That position of powerlessness because of those in power amidst all of the pain and all of the, the disappointments of life. There this membrane of grace come and it says to us, because I love you, I want to heal you. Because I love you, I want to restore you. Because I love you enough, I want to bring you back to where I have created you. To have a life full of, of life where you can experience acceptance and not only tolerance. Where the fullness of joy is not only for a moment from 9 to 11 or 11 to 1, but it is from Sunday to Sunday. Where we are not only stirred, but also changed. Where the pressure of the membrane is actually making us to have that ability to when we hit the rock bottom, that we know we can pray ourselves up and say, Lord, do it again. Do it within me. And maybe, just maybe tonight, I do not know where you are. I do not know how low Jesus has to step to come and sit next to you in your pool of tears. In your alley of blood, I do not know where God needs to come and mend the brokenness within your own life. I do not know where you need to be located from being dislocated. I do not know how deep your pain is leveled at this moment. But what I know is Jesus came down to them. He came down with them and he stood on their level places to call out what shouldn't be there and then to seek them out, to touch them, to renew, restore, cure, and heal them. And also to locate them so that they can once again be healed into community, into worship with others. Regardless of the misfortune they might have experienced, regardless of the pain in the hurt, God is about to do a new thing within your life once you say, Lord, here I am. But like I said, I do not know where you are. But I know that this God is one that journeys with us no matter how low life has gone with us, no matter how deep our pain has taken us. There is a God that says, I am here. Where are you? Where am I? Matthew 12, verse 20, as I conclude tonight's devotion, speaks of a battered reed he will not break. And a smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. The scripture only speaks or plainly speaks of no matter how weak you are in faith. No matter how small your candle or your, your oil in your lamp is. Jesus or oh God comes to restore us. To place us on a ground that is higher than where he found us. And where you need to be located. God's grace will indeed lift you up. Where there are buckets of tears, there is a bucket of grace. Where your healing seems to be deeper than that which the, 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 the medical fraternity can understand, that is not the point. The point is Jesus locates you where you are. And that level place that is filled with disgrace, pain and anger, with disappointment, season after season, is about to be changed because Jesus is standing on top of it so that you can rise above it. But tonight, as you meditate 
upon the scripture that says, and Jesus came down. May God also locate you wherever you are. Wherever your brokenness may lead you to, may God's grace and divine reversal of whatever kept you broken for so long restore you, heal you, so that when you pray, God answers. When you knock, God opens. So that that window that you always used to look out to and imagined what life can be, start to reimagine what life with Christ can be once you enter your broken and fractured worlds with the power of the Holy Spirit, holding on, not for dear life, but holding on to the hand of God that will never leave nor forsake you. May the Spirit of God sustain you during these times and seasons that seemingly do not want to leave you. But remember, when he came down, he didn't go and sit down. The Bible says he came down and he stood on their level places. He stood on the death that was around them, on the disappointment that was around them. He stood upon it so that they can rise. Maybe it's about time that you invite God to come and stand above your problems so that you rise above it and not succumb to it. May the Holy God that has called each and every one of us to come and journey in this week of prayer, of revival, to come and experience God once again. May that very God that has called you, not only to be a Wesley Gilder, but to be a servant of God, may that God heal you, restore you, and lift you up. Because that is where I believe God wants all of us to be. But like life, nothing is guaranteed for us. Today we are up, tomorrow we are down. But Matthew 12 verse 20 speaks of even though those with little faith, he will not break you off. Even those whose oil in their lamps are only making a smoke, he will not put you out. Instead, those with little faith, you will lift up and, and those with only a smoke in the lamp, he will light you again. Because God sees beyond our troubles. God sees beyond our pain. God sees in our hearts, even before it starts to beat, can see into our thoughts even before we start to think and know what we want to say even before we say it. But the message of that day to Jesus and those around was for the glory of God to arise amidst them. Whatever we do and however we get through our problems, our sicknesses, both spiritually and in the physical body, may it be so that Jesus Christ can be glorified and so that the glory of God can be felt and seen by those who encounter us that has gone to the altar, that has been there, that has been touched by this God. May we who come tonight or who have come to listen tonight, may the victory of all of our problems be a testimony to those who watch us closely. You will testify with me that at times our, our downfall is not so much what people say about us, but it's how we respond to what is said about us. So if somebody says, I am a failure, the moment I fail, I believe what people are saying. But here Jesus comes amidst all of the failures of people, amidst all of the oppression of people. And he said, I am about to change that which seems impossible. 
I'm about to do a new thing because I do not do it only for my sake, but for the sake of God. May we who come tonight bring glory to the one who has called us so that whoever meets us, meet not us, but the risen Christ in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to you, convener. Um, and that was um, Fundisi, the Reverend Juliet Van Fochel, um, bringing us our word for today. Um, you are telling us about the Jesus who comes down to us to heal the sick, to heal the broken, to heal the fractured, and to heal the dismembered. Indeed, he is such a God. Um, Sakukala kuye, sakuli, la sakubizela kuye, utiko akatu libengata kevo kotwa, umutiko owe shayo, asisheli. Siabule la kakulu kenga yon galomia lezo mfundi suetu. Indeed, litemba letu kokba, God will still come down even in our circumstances, even in our situation. Passes fumana, si broken, si dismembered goba. Uh, there are so many ways of being broken, of being disfigured, of being dismantled. Some are uh, mentally dismantled, you know, some are emotionally broken um, by the things that have transpired in recent times. And so our hope is that even in our situation, I will now ask um, our brother Sibusi Somkachwa Uguba Asitanda Zere. Over to you, my brother. Uh, thank you. Um, I greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Um, Sizotandaza, which is the closing prayer. Um, may we all bow down and close our eyes and pray. Father God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we come before your throne as your daughters and as your brothers, as your sons. In God's silanga zilele we nisu lako sele tu la kulu manon kisiyazot. The word of God says, "Ale shimba yon jumselens." Baba siabongo tisel kumbi manon kisiyazot. Sel chenchi lango osi every different aspect of our life that is ordained to change even today. Thank you for the appointment that you have said. While to this we thank you God for We thank you, mighty God, for the presence of the Holy Spirit over this session. Daddy, as we pray for the revival, may you send your angels course so that when you get there, you follow what the Holy Spirit of God has done. We come before your throne as we close. Baba, let your word continue to speak to us, even no matter even no matter studying, but the message continue to manifest in us, continue to meditate in our lives. Amen. 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 That was Um Zalwane Usbusi so Mkachwa see um Tandazo doing the closing prayer for us. Uh, Mandi Mandazi so go baba Zalwane Bam si figedele es pedweni salom tandazo and um sanje uh budela kakulu umfundi sue to a best kubela um tandazo umfundi su Juliet Van Fochel from East London. Sibulela ku executive ya sepra mfonte ngokusi patela um, these weekly prayers in preparation of the upcoming uh, eighth annual revival. Godwa, I think uh, most importantly, sibulela ku ninonge ni na who are our supporters, who follow us on um, our social media and who fellowship with us. Yan bulela bazalwa ni nani bota denge nkaso yenu. Sian Bulela and Gogus Nyameze, La Tasite Sanama, King Licking Upon Alapo, um, see Polisaka Kuruna Lapo. Godwa, I just want to announce that we are meeting again um, tomorrow evening 
at 7 p.m. At 7 o'clock, we are meeting um, on this Zoom platform. We are also going to be live streaming on our Facebook page as well at 7 p.m. for our day four of our weekly prayer in preparation for our annual revival. Um, we really appreciate you um, hosting this service for us today and leading us in this service. Uh, on Christmas when she was planned as the resident minister of uh, Cambridge Methodist Society, she decided, oh, by you know, planning, I'm not going to do it every Christmas. It's going to be going to be going to Christmas. That's really like, but one day I will return uh, this uh, olive branch. And so now I want to say that the debt has been settled. We are again meeting on level grounds as Jesus met on level grounds with the with the sick. And now we will just ask you Thank you so much to the executive of Bramfontein Methodist Society and also the Western Guild executive for the invite. I am honored to be here tonight and may we continue to, to take our level places that is painful, our level places that bring us so much of discomfort, may we continue to take it to the feet of Jesus because I believe that is where the power comes from to heal us, to restore us, and eventually to set us, send us out to be servants that's worthy of the cross of Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>